when we were here before. I couldn't look you in the eye. Oh, hello there and welcome to Smashing the Sudoku. I'm Thomas Snyder, a three-time World Sudoku Champion and one-time World Puzzle Champion. And I hope you really enjoy the content we bring on this side. And if you do, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. You were talking last week about advertisements, and that was a little bit of a joke. Uh, we're not bringing advertisements to the site, but ads at gmpuzzles.com is now a, an email you should be using at any time you find something interesting and want to send it to us. Ask Dr. Sudoku ADS at gmpuzzles.com is a new email to connect with for this channel. Uh, we've been using that to pull out some viewer questions, and so one question today came from Caitlin C., who said, uh, Thomas, I heard that last week was your birthday. Happy birthday. Is there anything you'd change about 2022? And it's an interesting question, not because I would change anything about 2022, I wouldn't change anything about any stage of my life. But 2022, the year I lived being 42, uh, was one of the most full years in my life and, and even had, I think, maybe as some of the headline moments being hospitalized, not just once, but actually twice. I was actually again in a hospital last week for observation due, due to bipolar disorder too. And the thing is, the second time was much, much less severe than the first because I had friends watching out for me, I had myself watching out for me and even and say people in the puzzle community aware of these things. And so, you know, looking back at that March 2022 moment, the first time I had extreme mania, writing a puzzle hunt for myself, this is an image, as you see here, of one of the puzzles I wrote for myself. It's got a picture of the first MIT mystery hunt coin I ever won, which was a snow globe from the spies hunt. It references a puzzle I wrote uh, the following year uh, when we ran the hell hunt um, with a whole host of friends who it's been good to start to connect with. Like, I, I, I don't think I would rewrite the record books. I think it's fun to think about. I think it's fun to pull out examples from history and do that. But like, it, it's key that we don't judge history too much. Judge is an important, I think, word for, for this week in this video. Um, because you, you can't really know what would have happened differently if you didn't have that failure. I think you learn through your failures. You learn through your successes. Like, if I were to rewrite some concept from last year, maybe some pitches are thrown a little differently and some number that gets an asterisk by it isn't isn't actually beaten, um, you know, and that, that asterisk number is maybe the, the big number for the day. But uh, anyway, this is probably sounding like nonsense again. Let's actually get to the topic of today's talk, which are two puzzles representing two different styles from that second week on the GM puzzle site, Type Fit Sudoku, a genre I invented myself and, and really highlighted in the Mutant Sudoku book, and then later with a Type Fit Sudoku collection, both with Wei Wa Wong as a co-author, and Nurikabe, Nurikabe being the first of the two puzzles, it's important to recognize the first of the two puzzles. For this week which is a shading genre from uh, Japan. So we're going to go forward with uh, working on those uh, those themes and we want to start with Nurikabe so we'll get that site up first. So Nurikabe time was a puzzle that uh, was trying to achieve a theme that maybe multiple times in uh, my life I had tried to do. If you're going to do like a one to n theme and sometimes need to do the one to n in a, a circular order like clock face. And so that was the goal here. Obviously, you can see it was a little too tough to make it just work with those clock numbers. So I have 13 o'clock down here. So 13 o'clock is somewhere between six and seven o'clock because six plus seven is 13. I don't know. I'm just making up the story now. I don't remember how this originally constructed. But to solve this, you know, we've got some easy traits, all Nurikabe that have diagonally adjacent digits are going to be shaded between those. And then even with these that are just two apart, like three is going to have to grow out this way, four is going to have to grow out this way. Um, there are some interesting deductions that work around like these two positions. Like if this 10 extended this way, it blocks off both the spots for that 11. The same would be true this way if the 11 came left. So the, this 11, this 10 have to come like this. Uh, and this 12 actually extends up to the top. And so here we actually have a, an isolated corner. If we don't take this position, that means the two comes up here. That means these must be used. Uh, this can't have a two by two box. So it looks like it has to take this cell to get connected. And these are all part of that 12. The 12 now is 8, 9, 10 coming across the top, 11, 12, it's now finished. This 10 continues this way, this has to come down, this has to come down. This 10 is pretty cramped, so I'm guessing this is what I would look at next. It can take 4, 5, 6, but we always have to extend through this cell. Um, uh, it actually always has to take this, and this is more on an option. So this is now 6, 7, 8, 9, possibly 10, so this looks good. This 9 has to come down a cell, so that means it hits here, that means the 8 comes over. Uh, this 9 is going to continue, takes this, continue out, this takes this, this has to shade out for the 7 clues, we take one more. This has to go over to here, but these shaded cells have to stay connected, so this comes in, comes this way, this hat now comes to the left. We've got 6, 7, 8, this has to continue down, this is now 10 total. 
This is three from that space, so this is 11, this is nine. Those groups are now finished. And because there's no connection through this path, I gotta take this cell. No connection means I take this cell, this puts in, this puts in this five, this will always be shaded off whichever uh, of these goes. The shaded group has to keep extending, so I gotta take that out on the left side and doing that, it now looks like I do have to take this cell to get 10 here. Eight is coming down this channel, it's taking this, this channel still extending, this is still extending, so seven has to come to here. Uh, eight has to come to at least here. And what do we have now? We've got seven. This is now a finished eight. And we're now at some end stage of the puzzle. And you can see why I had to make this grid large enough to include this 13 for this to work. This top is very forced um, from this position of the grid and looks pretty clean. But the bottom is more of a mess. In working through this, it's helpful to think about where are certain extremes that these numbers can go. Uh, the seven can't actually get to seven if it doesn't take this cell. That doesn't mean it has to take this cell or this cell, but there's like a path that's like six to here. Six to here, that's no good, so this doesn't look like I can take it. Six to here might work, but in marking this cell in, marking this as part of the extended Nurikabe Ocean, I've got to take this, that puts in this cell. Now the last cell for that seven is going to be here or here, but it's going to mark this one off. So this is the force seven, the 13 comes across, comes to here. Can this six get down to this bottom edge? No. Can it get even to the cell like this? No. The six is kind of contained to a space that looks about like so. And I think it's important to note that if I don't take this cell, I only have five for it to go. So this is part of the six. And that means this 13 is gonna come across this way. And I still do need to have this ocean connect up. And so uh, one thing to, to start to see is that if I take this five, it looks like it's going to block off too much. So this five is this space. So now I have just this. And how, how am I going to connect back the rest of these seas to this ocean? I could take this. That forces these. But now I don't leave myself 13 spaces. It looks like I leave myself 12 spaces. So I need something more efficient as a packing than this packing. And what I do see as an option for that is to take exactly these six more. I have seven plus six. And then that leaves behind these six, and that's going to be the final answer. So uh, because of how I set up this grid, it's not going to do the answer check, but this is the correct answer for this puzzle, and, and you've hopefully got a sense of how to work your way through it. We're now going to go to our second puzzle for this talk through, which is this tight fit Sudoku. And this is a puzzle that went to 11. Uh, it actually has all the big givens uh, in the grid already, so there are only tight fit cells left to go. And with any puzzle like this, it's useful to just even start with repeated digits that are there a lot of the time. I see three fives, so it means I need to have a five in this tight fit cell. I need five in this tight fit cell. I need a five in this tight fit cell. I've got two fours that put in this four. Let's see. Um, these tight fit cells are small, so we're going to have to come back. But we'll know, for instance, seven has to be over on the left here. Actually, ten. This ten has to be uh, in this space. Got three sixes, that's probably a better number to work with. So this six and this six in the bottom I mean there's a six in this tight fit cell. I need to put a six now in one of these cells, but it's not larger than seven, so this is the six. And this is our last six. Um, these actually are pretty big numbers, and they need to have a larger number even than that under them. So this two has no place to go except this small cell. That seems useful to know. And this two coming this way has no place to go except for this cell because it's not larger than a four. So this is now a sure two over six. That actually means this one is down here and then the one is up here, but I won't notate that yet. That's a little tricky to be useful at this point. What more do we have? We've got these two eights, just like the two fours, and eight comes over to this cell. We're still getting three, four, and a larger number here. So there's a larger number than six that's coming into the space. So let's think about this fact. Two, three, four, six, and then something that's seven or higher. So we're going to have two and three, four, but the seven or higher number is down here. So we're not going to be able to uh, ignore that for too long. But maybe there's something I, I have skipped, which is this type of cell. Actually, this looks like exactly what I want to do right now. So I have placed a two right here. I have placed a three right here. So now this can't be two or three. This has to be one. And if that's one, that places a one right here as well. This one coming over here places a one into this cell. And now I have a one up top and a one up top in, in these spots. So more good progress. Let's see, I think tracking the 10 will still be useful because 10 is not smaller than eight. So a 10 is in one of these cells, which means a 10 has to now be in this cell. 
I'll again put it just on that border edge because we don't know for sure. Um, oh, this, this three works the same way as the two. I should have done this sooner. So the same way these need large values, three can't be under them. So this three has to be in the spot two. And that now actually means this one four was an easier thing to hold mark over. So now I do just have uh, set seven, nine, 10, and 11 to go. 10 has to go in here because of the other numbers. Nine is somewhere like that. Uh, 10 is on this tight fit cell. And seven or 11 split across these. Um, if that's true, then this has to have the five up top because it's now the smallest number. And this is again, a seven, nine, or 11, but nine is over here, so it's a seven or 11. Let's still see. I think we did some good progress, but I just want to make sure I'm not missing a key observation. Okay, with this filled in, this eight has to come in and sit in this cell. We have five, seven, eight, nine that are going to go into this space with one more large number, one, four, or six, ten. This three has to come over here and it can only be in this cell. That means there is a three in this cell. And this will be the last three, and it's not having a one or two near it, so it is on the top. This is a number smaller than six, but it's not one, two, three, or five, so this has to be a four. That means there's a four in this cell. This has to be a number less than six, but it's not one, three, four, or five, so this is two. That being a two means this is the last place for a two on the left side of the grid, and this will then be the last cell for two on the right side of the grid. We now have seven and 11 to go in this row, so this is the first time we get an 11 in the grid, which is gonna give us a lot. It, for instance, finishes this as seven over nine. It makes this as eight over 11. That means this over here is eight over 11 as well. This space needs a seven. It also now needs a nine for, uh, above that 10. This is the last entry for this column and must be a nine. That puts another nine right over here. Let's see, at the top we have eight, nine, and 11 to go. Nine is already in the grid, so this is nine. Well, actually, it, it could have an eight under it, so let's not do too much there, but this is correct. Uh, this is one over 10. That one will now help us put this one in, which uh, finishes docking this space. It leaves three with 11, which means this is four with 11, which means this is seven with 11, which does mean this is eight over nine. That puts an eight in here and puts in a seven, puts in a seven with a five on top. And again, this is now the correct answer. I've uh, edited the way for this visual so it wouldn't be giving the pen pod default message, but we've gone through these two puzzles. We've gone through our second uh, episode of smashing the Sudoku. So hopefully you enjoyed seeing how I smashed or at least uh, took some time, but worked through uh, these puzzles I wrote for myself. Thanks and we'll see you again soon.